For today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a trendy project that is inspired by 1990s fashion. We are going to be making a simple baguette bag. Hi, I'm Jess and welcome to the Sally Tomato YouTube channel. If you're new to sewing or if you like sewing stylish projects, then this is the place to be. Today's project is very quick and simple. The pattern I'll be showing you how to make is called Jessica. I've been designing collaborative patterns for Missouri Star recently, such as the Jenny Bag for Jenny Doan, and I figured it was about time I had a pattern for myself. Plus, I chose the design of this bag because I was born in the 90s, and Sarah Jessica Parker starred in one of my favorite TV series in the 90s, and I absolutely love all of the fashion that was in that TV series. There are only a few pieces that you'll need to cut out from your fabrics, and we'll have this project stitched together in no time. You can make this project out of nearly any fabric, including cotton, canvas, cork, faux leather, faux fur, or micro suede. This bag is a great size to carry everyday essentials such as your phone, keys, cards, and sunglasses. There's an optional interior slip pocket and sleek shoulder strap. This bag is so stylish to carry throughout your day, but also great for a night out as well. I'm so excited to dive into today's project, but before we do, if you like our videos, we would love it if you would give us a thumbs up and also hit that subscribe button so you always know when a new video releases. Before we get started, you'll need to purchase the pattern and gather your supplies. You can either download the pattern from our site or request it at your local Sally Tomato retailer. Visit our website for a complete list of retailers. All of the supplies you need are listed on the back of the pattern. If you downloaded the pattern, make sure to print out the pattern piece at 100% or actual size so it's to scale. I cannot wait to share this special pattern with you, so why don't we get started? First of all, let's review the fabrics needed for this pattern. You'll want to follow the cutting instructions included on the first page of the pattern. It may be helpful to label your pieces as you cut them by either marking the name of each piece on the wrong side with a removable pen or chalk, or you can visit our website and download the free piece labels sheet. And then you can clip the piece labels to each of your pieces and reuse the labels for other patterns. It's very important when cutting your fabrics to make sure that the width of each piece runs with the cross grain of your fabric, meaning it runs from selvage to selvage. Included with the pattern is a pattern piece, so you'll want to trace or photocopy the template at 100% or actual size before beginning this pattern. You'll need to cut piece A front and back and piece B gusset out of your main fabric, lining, interfacing, and foam. You can use virtually any fabric type that you'd like for the exterior. I'm using Sally Tomato Legacy Faux Leather in Fuchsia, but you could also use denim, canvas, quilt cotton, or even cork fabric. What's nice is that this pattern only takes a third of a yard. I'm also using the Fuchsia Faux Leather for my contrast fabric, but you could certainly choose a coordinating fabric to use for the contrast. And you'll want to use either cork, faux leather, faux fur, or another type of non-woven fabric. You'll also need a 14 inch single slide nylon coil zipper for your project. The zipper should be size number five, meaning that the width of the coil is five millimeters wide. I cut this piece to length using Sally Tomato Zipper by the yard. So I simply added a decorative zipper pull onto the zipper tape and cut the length that I needed. Since this is nylon coil, you can cut and sew directly through the zipper tape and the teeth. You can visit our website or your local Sally Tomato retailer to see our collection of zippers that we offer. I highly recommend them for bag making. So if you haven't used them yet, I definitely think this is a great pattern to start with to try them out. And as always, we have lots of supportive tutorials on how to use zippers by the yard on our YouTube channel. So if you're worried about getting the zipper pulls on, head on over there and learn how to use the zippers by the yard so you can be a zipper expert. You'll also need two inch and a half O-rings and the pattern instructions include the option to add Chicago screws or rivets. They're optional in the pattern to reinforce the strap. Plus they add a little bit of a decorative touch. The Chicago screws require 
require no setting tools, only a screwdriver. So if you're a new bag maker, those are the ones I would recommend to try first before diving into rivets. Let's move on to the sewing instructions. The first section in the pattern is to fuse the interfacing to the coordinating pieces. Make sure to read your interfacing manufacturer's instructions for fusing, but you'll want to center and fuse one interfacing piece A to the wrong side of each main fabric piece A, as well as the interfacing piece B to the main fabric piece B. I'm sure some of you are thinking, wow, she's fusing to faux leather, and that's okay because we are fusing to the wrong side. You do not want to touch your iron to the right side of the fabric because that will melt the fabric and it could hurt your iron. Next, we'll attach the foam to coordinating pieces. First of all, trim three quarters of an inch from the top edge of foam pieces A, then also trim the foam piece B for your gusset according to the pattern. Next, with right sides up, position each main fabric piece A over one foam piece A. You'll want to align the bottom and side edges and use sewing clips to hold the layers together. Next, we'll baste an eighth inch from the aligned edges. For any basting, you'll want to set your machine to about five millimeters for the stitch length. If you're using faux leather or cork fabric, I definitely recommend a Teflon foot. I'm using the very narrow foot on the Baby Lock Accomplish. Generally, I don't have any issues sewing on faux leather or cork with this foot, but I want you to have the best experience possible and Teflon is the way to go if you're going to be making bags using faux leather and cork. Then with right sides up, center the main fabric piece B over foam piece B and baste an eighth inch from the long edges. Next, we'll shape the gusset. On the wrong side of each piece B, you'll mark angled lines and to do so, you'll measure in from each corner of the short ends and also away from each corner of the short ends along the long edges. You'll mark the angled line by connecting each of those measurements. Once each angled line is marked in from each corner, you're going to stitch an eighth inch in from each marked line. After sewing, cut along the angled lines. Then I'm going to fold the gusset in half to mark the center along each piece B long edge. Make sure to repeat for the lining gusset, but this time after marking the angled lines, you don't have to sew, you can go ahead and cut along the angled lines. Then make sure to mark the center points. I've already went ahead and marked the bottom center of each piece A from the main fabric and the lining. So once you've done that, with right sides together, match the main fabric front and the main fabric gusset center marks and add a clip to hold the layers together. Then align the top edges and the sides and clip each of those. Then align the remaining edges and clip the layers together. If you're having a hard time getting the gusset to lay flat, I recommend to take your scissors and cut eighth inch snips into the gusset along the curved edges to help it lay flat. Once you're ready, sew the layers together with a quarter inch seam allowance. After one side is attached, you'll repeat to attach the gusset to the main fabric back. You can set the exterior aside. Now is the time to add any optional pockets to lining pieces A. You can visit our YouTube channel for slip pocket and zipper pocket tutorials. You'll need to come up with your own dimensions for how wide and how deep you'd like your pockets. Since this is a mini pattern, it's designed for beginners, so I opted to skip any pockets to make it a simpler pattern to sew. So if you're an experienced bag maker, and you want to add some additional pockets, I encourage you to do so. Now we're going to repeat the same process to attach the lining gusset to the lining pieces A. Once you have the first layer clipped together, you're gonna start by sewing with 3 8 inch seam allowance and gradually increase to 5 8 inch seam allowance. I know that seems large, but it will make sense later on, so that way our lining is just a little bit smaller than our exterior and it will fit neatly inside. 
Then we'll repeat to attach the remaining lining piece A to the opposite side of the gusset, but this time we're going to leave about a five inch turning opening. Along the bottom edge, you'll want to leave about five inches unsewn, so make sure to backstitch, skipping over that opening, and then start again with a backstitch. You'll continue with 5 8 inch seam allowance, then as you reach the opposite top edge, you'll decrease back to 3 8 inch seam allowance. After you're done sewing, trim the lining seam allowance to a quarter inch wide. Also, you'll want to turn the exterior right side out. Next, we'll attach the strap connectors. Thread each piece C through an O-ring, and with wrong sides together, fold piece C in half, aligning the raw ends. Add a sewing clip to hold the layers together. Top stitch each piece C about three quarters of an inch from the folded end across the strap, then an eighth inch from remaining edges to create a box. Make sure to backstitch for reinforcement. Then with right sides together, center one piece C at each main fabric, piece B for the gusset at the short end and align the raw ends. Baste an eighth inch from the raw ends to hold each connector in place. Now we're ready to assemble the bag. With wrong sides together, align the closed raw end of the zipper along the center of the contrast piece D zipper tab. Top stitch the zipper an eighth inch from the raw edge. Then fold the tab in half, covering the right side of the zipper, and top stitch the tab an eighth inch from each edge. Next, with wrong sides together at the open end of the zipper, fold each end of the zipper at a 90 degree angle away from the center and stitch in place. Then grab the exterior of your bag and mark the top center of each side of the gusset. Open the zipper completely and with right sides together, position one side of the zipper along the top raw edge of the main fabric back. The folded end of the zipper should be about a quarter inch from one center mark. Continue aligning the zipper along the top raw edge and then begin to taper the opposite end of the zipper away from the top edge, opposite of the center mark according to the pattern. Then sew the zipper in place with a quarter inch seam allowance. Repeat that same process to attach the remaining side of the zipper to the main fabric front. Then after sewing, test your zipper to make sure it opens and closes evenly. If you need to make any adjustments, now is the time to do so. Otherwise, open the zipper completely and turn the exterior wrong side out. Next, grab your lining and turn it right side out and insert the lining into the exterior so the right sides of the fabric are facing each other. Align the side seams and the top raw edges and use lots of sewing clips to hold the layers together. Make sure that the zipper and hardware are tucked down inside the bag. Then sew around the top edge with 3 8 inch seam. After sewing, turn the bag right side out by pushing the exterior and lining through the unsewn section in the lining. Fold the edges of the turning opening to the wrong side and you can either hand sew or top stitch the opening in the lining closed an eighth inch from the folded edges. Then push the lining down into the exterior and gently smooth out the edges to shape the bag. You'll want to press the top edge of the bag with the zipper at the top. If you use cotton or canvas, any woven fabrics that you can apply an iron, you can do so. Otherwise, use a seam roller. You can use double-sided basting tape to help hold the zipper in place or a sewing clip. Then top stitch the top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. Just be careful not to sew through the zipper while top stitching. And the last section is to attach the strap. Take your contrast piece E for your strap and fold it in half lengthwise with wrong sides together. Then top stitch an eighth inch from each length side.
Thread each strap through one O-ring from the outside to the inside and fold the ends up about two inches. You can top stitch the strap ends together or you can punch holes with a rotary punch or an awl or another type of hole cutter and install rivets or Chicago screws to hold each end in place. We've added a link below this video with a tutorial for each of those types of hardware, whichever you choose. And one final tip is that you can use your fingers to roll the side edges of the bag and add on some sewing clips around the outer seams. Once each side is clipped, you can let your bag sit clipped together for a few hours or even overnight, and this will help form the bag and hold the shape. Then you can remove the clips and your new bag is ready to use. I truly hope you enjoyed learning how to make the Jessica bag, and I would love to hear your honest feedback about the pattern design, construction, and the tutorial in the comments below. Also, if you have any additional questions, feel free to leave a comment below too. Don't forget to share and show off your photos of your completed bag. You should be so proud and we'd love to see your fabric choices and how you're styling your new baguette. Use the hashtags Sally Tomato and hashtag Jessica Bag on social media so we can see it. Are there any particular sewing or bag making tutorials you'd like to see from us? Let us know in the comments too. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a creative day. I'll see you next time.